The 2020-21 season countdown is brought to you by Odds Checker, your one-stop betting hub. Hello, welcome along to AFTV. I am Pippa Monique and this is the Women's Football Show. It feels weird doing it alone from home, but you know, times have changed. We're going to get through this. The WSL season kicked off over the weekend and there was 19 goals scored. Six of those were from Arsenal. Now let's get into it. Let's talk about the Arsenal game. They kicked off their WSL campaign 6-1 against Reading with goals from Kim Little, two from Vivian Miedemar and a hat-trick from Jill Ward. Now, she is on absolute fire. Jill Ward is in her second season at Arsenal. Um, we always knew she was going to come to life. It's early to say it's only the first game in, but we're, we're getting a glimpse of what we can expect from Jill Ward in the future. Joe Montemurro has said in the past that she's one of the young players as part of his future plans and prospects to really build up the greatest Arsenal side that he possibly can. Um, we're starting to see that. And of course, there, we're never in doubt to see Vivian Miedemar on the score sheet. And what a rocket of a goal. If you haven't seen it yet go and catch the highlights go on to Arsenal women's Twitter account they've definitely shown it on there I've retweeted it the goal is an absolute thunderbolt off the crossbar and in what do you expect Vivian Miedemar the goat and of course a goal from our captain Kim Little a perfectly picked out pass from Leah Williamson in the midfield right into the penalty box uh, and yeah Kim Little getting onto the end of it and scoring a beautiful goal. Uh, towards the end of the game of course we conceded a goal I say of course because the scoreline was 6-1 I didn't expect to concede any goals. I thought it was going to be a straight walk in the park, clean sheet. Um, we've got two of our recent players, Daniel Carter and Emma Mitchell, recently signed to Reading. So it was it was it was bittersweet seeing them again, but definitely bittersweet for Arsenal to concede a goal and for it to come from Daniel Carter towards the fight. She, to to be honest, throughout the game, she was really the brightest star in the Reading squad. Is that fair to say? Is that a bit of favouritism? Along with Farrah Williams and Tasha Harding. But, you know, towards the end of the game, it seemed like a lot of the Reading players had kind of given up. You could see it in their body language. There were five goals down, six goals down at that point. Um, but Daniel Carter just kept on going. She smacked the post at one point. Manuel and Zinsberg had to check because she thought it was going wide, but it definitely wasn't. And was kind of lucky that it didn't go in because Daniel Carter definitely could have had two goals on the day. Um, but then a defensive error. The ball was cleared passed back to Manuela Zinsberger. She received the touch. I don't know what she was doing. She was overthinking. I don't know, just switched off. Um, and Daniel Carter capitalised on that moment and just poked it through um, and got that consolation goal for Reading. So that kind of, you know, we've, we've noticed, in, in, especially in the last season, that goal difference means everything in this league at that top of the table. I know the league has just started. Yes, we are at the top of the table with, with a 6-1 win. Um, but as it comes towards the end of the season, as fatigue starts to step in, hopefully no injuries like we've experienced in past seasons. But, you know, it's a long season. And when it comes down to the wire, the teams such as Man City and Chelsea, they love to score goals too. So goal difference is very important. So we've got a goal difference of five there, which is very good. Um, but it's a great start to the season. I managed to speak to Joe Montemiro after the game to ask him a few questions about how he thought the game went. Um, and here is what he had to say. Hello, Joe. Congratulations on your first win of the season. Thank you, Pippa. Uh, we saw the use of five substitutes used in the game today. How important is it? For you? And obviously we saw some starters that are normally first team starters. That's like Daniel Vanderdonk and Lisa Evans. How important is it for you to have that uh, bigger squad depth this season? Yeah, look, I mean, um, you know, we, we've we've always had, you know, the same amount of players. We've always had 20, 21 players uh, in, in the squad. It's, um, you know, it's been unfortunate in the past years that, uh, you know, we've had some some long term injuries and some players that haven't been able to um, to get right. So we've had to, we've had to make do with that. Um, but um, I think um, it's it's uh, it's uh, important for us because uh, this season is going to be um, going to be longer, obviously, with the added FA Cup, yep. the Conti Cup coming up, um, then the second phase of the FA Cup in in uh, in in in, uh, in the second half of the season. So, um, you know, I'm I'm happy to um, you know use a type of, and I'll do this in inverted commas, Tim, a rotation. <laughs> um, uh, because uh, you know we we can have the opportunity to to freshen up players and have them at their best. So it it, it poses uh, a good challenge. It poses a good challenge to have uh, to have uh, the depth in squad. We also saw four WSL debuts today, but of course we've seen Caitlin Ford in an Arsenal shirt before. That that link up play between Caitlin Ford, oh no, between Jewel Ward, sorry, for that last goal. Do you think we can see a new partnership in the in the Arsenal team there between Ward and Ford? 
Yeah, look, uh, it's going to be tough for you journalists to say road and fall <laughs> in one, uh, in one, in one uh, sentence. Huh? But uh, look, um, you know, combination play is, uh, is part of us. Uh, so uh, whether it's Jill and uh, and Caitlin, or whether it's Viv and uh, and Jordan, um, look, it's uh, it's it's how we 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 like to break down defences and, uh, and 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 play our football. So um, you know, any combination that uh, that is successful, I'll uh, I'll uh, invite and and bring it on. And of course, we're so used to seeing the women play on an early Sunday afternoon. But next week, we're your way to West Ham, which is a late kickoff on a Saturday. Does that cause any, I know it's only one day difference, but does it cause any disruption to the routine you're planning for WSL fixtures? No, it only uh, it only poses problems for the coach because the later the day gets on, I, I start to get a little bit more tired because I get up <laughs> early in the morning. So, uh, so no, but uh, in all, in all, uh, in all seriousness, no, it's it's not a, it's not an issue. Um, we have, um, you know, we we have a lot of three day turnarounds. So uh, you know, the the extra extra twelve hours or whatever there is, mm. whatever it is, isn't really going to make a, a major difference. And I have to ask on that last goal of the game from former Arsenal player Daniel Carter. What was the emotion when that goal was conceded um, from Zinsberger there? Yeah, as I said before, it's a, it's a very unmanu. Mistake, very unmanu. Uh, she's uh, usually pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, decisive with uh, with making that decision. Um, you know, these lapses of concentration, we we just can't we can't afford to happen. Uh, that's the reality. Um, and if we want to ascertain the standards that we want to we want to uh, we want to keep, both here off the park and in and in and in the training uh, stimulus, we have to make sure that those standards are, are met. And um, you know, uh, as I said, we all make mistakes uh, and, and I'm sure Manu will never make that mistake again. Well, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Pippa. Now, the actual first game of the WSL season was between newly promoted side Aston Villa and Manchester City. Um, and you could tell, as bad as it sounds, that they were the newly promoted side because two defensive errors led to George Stanway tapping it in uh, for a 2-0 win to Manchester City. Aston Villa is going to have a tough ride if it's anything to go by on that game. But, you know, they played up against one of the giants of the WSL. So it's not, it's not, it's not the best way to start the league. Uh, but they're down 2-0. They lost their game at home. But it's a long season and there's, there's other games that they can potentially pick up points in. Now, the results of the other games that were played on the Sunday were Brighton and Hove Albion 2, Birmingham City 0. We saw goals uh, from new signing Inessa Kagman and Megan Connolly for Brighton and Hove Albion. The other scores on the day were Bristol City 0, Everton 4, a massive win for Everton, a great way to start their campaign, clean sheet, four goals. And then the other games, we saw some draws. So it was a one-all draw between Spurs and West Ham United uh, and also a draw between Manchester United and Chelsea. Chelsea being the giants of the WSL right now with all of the new signers they have brought in. They're literally moving like their counterparts, the men's team. As you've seen in the men's football, Chelsea have made some very key signings. Some big players will come in and the same for Chelsea women. Now, for those of you that would have watched the Women's Champions League final between Wolfsburg and Lyon, there was an uh, interview that went viral after the game where a reporter was questioning Pinel Harder after the game because it was rumours that she'll be leaving Wolfsburg to, to join Chelsea women. And he kept pestering her, saying, will this be the last time we see you in a Wolfsburg show? Will you be coming to the WSL? Fans want to know if you'll be coming to England. And she kept saying, I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I just want to, uh, you know, I just lost the Champions League final. I just... You know, I'm still a Wolfsburg player at this moment. And he kept pestering her, kept pestering her. But of course it happened. Penoharda is in the WSL and she uh, is playing for Chelsea. Uh, and she also, we also saw her play. She came in uh, within the 80th minute. She came in for Guru Rayton, another star player for Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea have got great squad depth there. Um, and of course, <laughs> a team to watch out for again this season. Not the greatest of starts for them to get just one point for a draw against Manchester United, who are also a team, the underdog uh, we always talk about the top three, Chelsea, Arsenal and City. But of course, Manchester United women are ones to look out for this season as well. West Ham United have made quite a few signings as well. But the one that is standing out, of course, is Rachel Daly. She is back on English soil. She's joined West Ham on a loan. Uh, she plays, she's an England international player um, and she is joined from Houston Dash. So I'm sure a lot of WSL and England fans will be happy to see her back in the WSL. Now, I know it's early doors, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Who do you think is going to win the league this season? There's a lot of new talent in the WSL. There's a lot more competition. It's not as easy as you think it's going to be, but who do you think 
is going to be the standout player in, in the WSL as a whole. And who do you think will win? It's early to say, but let's just predict it from now. I've been Pippa Monique. This is the Women's Football Show, and I will see you next week with more women's football updates. Robbie here from AFTV. We just want to say a big thank you to everybody who follows us across our various channels, over a million followers on YouTube. Don't forget, you can now also catch us on Reddit. We're on Reddit, so get involved with us on Reddit and also on TikTok. Keep it AFTV, baby, right here.